Hello, I am Melissa Ashley and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to see how accessible is Bletchley Park. Bletchley Park is a museum all about the code breakers during the war. If you've seen the films The Imitation Game about Alan Turing, this is where it's set and Enigma as well. Fun fact, I was actually born in Bletchley. I was born around the corner from here. So there's a lake here that I used to play around when I was a child and in one of the old war huts. But I've never been to the museum, so Scott and I are gonna check it out. We've just checked in at the gate. They've guided us to disabled parking and given us the information about ramp access and also the information about what's going on with regard to COVID. So let's go. One thing before we go in, we booked the tickets online yesterday and because we are residents of Milton Keynes, we do get a discount, however, Kara gets in free. So Scott, how much did the tickets cost? £10. About £10. So check online because we did get a discount because we are residents of Milton Keynes and different postcode areas get discounts. Also, before we get into this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because it helps my channel grow. Thank you very much. So we come out of disabled parking here and there's a ramp up here to the visitor centre. So I just need to get up this dropped curb. It says please wait to be called forward so we're going to wait here but there is a wheelchair ramp here so they're all power assisted doors and oh okay <laughs> can we just come <laughs> yeah so this is an introduction to Bletchy park video and it has a disabled access here because it's a wider door and it's a film showing on a few walls. There are interactive things that you can do here. This is all about learning cryptology and how the machine worked. We are in block C and we've been looking at all different things of equipment and there's interactive things here. It's all quite low level so I could reach or low level horizontal as well. And it's all flat flooring here. So accessibility is, there's no problems at all with it. We've come out of Hut C now and we're just coming along this path to the other buildings. All the old wartime buildings. We've also just been given free audio guides as well. So I've got it around my neck and the headphones around me. So you can stop and listen to information about Bletchley Park and that was given for free and you just drop it off on the way out and you keep the lanyard because they thoroughly wiped over with um, sanitizer the earphones and the um, sort of like the little radio thing so we're going to go into block B and as you can see it has dis disabled facilities in here 
And there's the lake just over there that I used to play around when I was a child. The public memorial for veterans of Bletchley Park and its outstations was dedicated by Her Majesty the Queen on July the 15th, 2011. So we've come into this next block and there's a one-way system in place but it's very spacious all around everything so and the gentleman who's outside he actually opened the door so we didn't have to touch any doors or anything and this starts telling us all the information about the code breaking machines so that's what we're going to have a little read on This is the disabled toilet, so hand dryer there, hand washing, loo, and just a bar here. That's it. Um, it's not the best disabled toilet facilities I've ever seen, actually. It's quite disappointing. Even the lock on the door, if you've got um, issues with your hands at all, it's not the greatest. And this is also a baby changing area as well. Um, it does have a ramp, but the doorway is narrow, it's not wide. And this is around the back of the mansion house where the garage is, so it's a bit out of nowhere. It seems weird to me that this is the place that I used to play as a child. Me and my best friend used to go to that part over there with our little fishing nets and fish for minnows and spend all our summers bringing our picnics up here, running around this lake, just playing around. It belonged to British Telecom at the time they had offices here and we used to come and go as we pleased and as I say it's just so strange that then this complete history became unfurled in front of us about the code breakers when really this was just my playground we're heading round past the huts and we're going up to the mansion house Here's the mansion house. This is going into the mansion house. And she said, as soon as we go in, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Need to turn left. Thank you. Oh, that's quite I'm narrow. Yeah, I can get through. Okay. It's quite down. narrow. There you go. this lead into here this is obviously someone important office and people were working in here as well.
okay so hut four is a cafe which is good because I'm pre-hungry it does have a sloped entrance so it's accessible and it's a wide door here as well that's a good thing as well Let's clean our hands. Okay, so cafe. Let's go get some food. <laughs> we just purchased an egg and cress sandwich, a packet of salt and vinegar crisps. What's this one? Carrot cake? No. And a raspberry and white chocolate um, muffin and it came to £11.50 we have our own drink with us we just went in hot 14 behind us and that was more about modern technology and how it's used to collect data on everyone now and the kind of things that we use that we don't realize is happening we're in the hut that does the D-Day landings information here and what part of Bletchley Park has play in it. So there's all the information places around and then we're going to go and watch a video all about it in a few minutes. We just watched a video about the D-Day landings in the room behind us it was probably about a 10 minute video it was really informative it kind of puts everything that you're learning around the huts into kind of a more easily manageable understandable kind of way and what Bletchley did with regard to D-Day how they um, tricked the German forces to think that they were going to be going to Calais which left Normandy susceptible to the attack. This wall here has so many names on because you can actually sponsor a brick and have your name put on it here for posterity. The old bike hut. The old fashioned bikes in there. It's all one way, so just follow it through. You'll come out that door there, just go across. Okay, okay thank you. No this was Alan Turin's office. Because I'm on a tiny travel scoot, I was able to negotiate these turns in this building. However, if you were on a larger scooter, you would have difficulty. So just be warned because they're like real sharp 90 degree turns out of these narrow doorways into each individual room. So this bit is quite inaccessible. And that was hut eight that's pretty inaccessible. So. That one just there. We're now in hut three, so I'm going to just turn you around. It's a narrow walkway here, and it's saying it's the most secret area because this is where the deciphered me messages were deciphered and translated. So it shows you the offices, and again. I'm going to have to do a sharp turn, which is why Scott's standing there to make sure that I can. So I'm just standing up for a second. This is an administration and typing room. And Scott's just wheeled my scoop through this very narrow door into this office it's easier. This is the intelligence officer's room. Mm. There's no doubt about it. These are flight plans for German aircraft escorting supply convoys across the Mediterranean area. Mm. 
duty officer's room. The watch. Again, because I'm on a travel scoot and I can't get up from it, we were able to maneuver around that hut. If you were in anything bigger or in a wheelchair, the doors are not electric, you've got to try and swing around difficult angles and things. You've got to remember these are wartime huts and they're there for historical reasons so you can't be expecting them to change up for dis disabled facilities or accessibility because otherwise they wouldn't be keeping the authenticity of the original huts. This is going up into hut 11A. This one's definitely more accessible, it has electric doors and easier wider spaces so 11a definitely more accessible this one is all about the enigma machine and the parts this is a replica of the bomb machine that alan turin created to help decrypt the messages quickly for the allies in hut 11, it's very low ceiling. There would have been a bomb computer in here too. It's where the wrens would have worked. That hut was a nightmare to get into because it only had one door that was opening. So Scott and I had to unlock the other door to get my scooter through. But then coming out, it's a singular narrow door again. So anything much bigger than my travel scoot would have difficulty getting out of there. We are about to start heading off out of here now. We've been around all the huts and seen everything, watched the videos and things. So I hope you enjoyed coming along today. I'll give you my rundown when we get to the car. Okay, so we have just left Bletchley Park. Now, I have to put like a balancing act here because this place is a historical place and there are parts of it that they cannot change for obvious, obvious reasons. Therefore, it makes accessibility difficult in some areas. Not saying all, however, some of the huts, I think if I remember rightly, 11A and 11 were particularly difficult because they were narrow corridors with sharp turns into the doorways and things. This might be different, after covid when they stop having to have a one-way system because it was they had to barrier off areas so you couldn't just go straight you had to do sharp turns and things and they were narrow that being said in other areas they had electric electric padded doorways so press on it opens up um the information and everything was all at the height that i could read comfortably from my scooter as well I visited one toilet facility which was around the back of the mansion house which wasn't particularly great. There was supposed to be other disabled toilet facilities elsewhere. In one of the huts that I asked where it did advertise that there was a disabled toilet they told me that it was closed, it was currently out of order. But there was no information to tell you that. So they could have improved more on that. So for how disabled accessible is Bletchley Park I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 that's our visit finished before I just end this video I want to say if you do buy a ticket to Bletchley Park it is actually for the year you can return during the year as many times as you like with that ticket it's not just for the one-off visit so if you don't feel like you can get it all done in one day you can come back I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And I'll see you all soon. Lots of love. Bye bye.